Hello, my name is David Wayburn and I will be presenting a short PowerPoint slide will be of some of my research results. What I want to discuss is a new way to describe the velocity profile formed by fluid flowing along a wall. A fluid like air flowing over a plate or wing is interesting in that as the fluid flows over the plate, the velocity at the surface is reduced to zero due to friction. And as we move further from the plate surface, the velocity slowly transitions to the bulk inlet flow velocity. This thin transition layer is called the boundary layer. It turns out the boundary layer causes drag. For an airplane wing, the added drag due to skin friction of this boundary layer is an important contribution to the total drag on the airplane. Now, the boundary layer itself has been studied for over 100 years and is still an active area of research. Unfortunately, the methods used to describe the thickness and the transition shape of this boundary layer are still rather crude. If you can't describe it properly, trying to transfer theory into practical results becomes more difficult. Today I want to describe a new method I developed to de describe the thickness and the shape of the boundary layer formed by fluid flowing along a solid surface. So let's get started. Thanks for tuning in. The results presented today are based on the journal paper referenced here. So let's set the scene. A fluid flowing from left to right encounters a thin flat plate. The plate and the flow extends in and out of the plane in the plus minus z direction. A boundary layer develops along the plate in the flow direction such that the velocity is zero at the surface and gradually transitions to u sub e at the boundary layer edge. The fluid velocity approaching the plate is u sub infinity. When we refer to the velocity profile along the plate, we mean the velocity u at x for all y. The question we want to answer is how do you characterize the thickness and shape of the velocity profile? Traditionally, the boundary layer thickness is most often described in terms of the 99% thickness, delta sub 99 the point where the velocity reaches 99% of the velocity u sub e. Besides the 99% thickness, other common thickness measurements are the displacement thickness and the momentum thickness, which are useful to calculate the shape parameter h sub 1, 2. Not a true shape parameter in a mathematical sense, but still useful nonetheless. All right, that was the traditional method, so let's jump right to the new boundary layer description. The development came about from looking at the Blasius solution for laminar fluid flow along a wall. Start by plotting u at xy divided by u sub infinity versus the scale boundary layer thickness, where the wall scaling is given by delta sub m, one of the new boundary layer thickness scales we will describe later on. Now, take the derivative with respect to the stretch distance above the plate, y divided by delta sub m. Take the derivative again, and we end up with this second derivative curve. Take a good look at this curve. I think you will agree that this looks very much like a Gaussian curve. In fact, if one assumes the second derivative of the velocity is actually a Gaussian curve, integrate it twice with the appropriate boundary condition, then one obtains this exponential error function shown here. This two-parameter curve is plotted along with the Blasius solution, where the error exponential function is using mu sub 1 and sigma sub v values calculated from the velocity solution. No adjustable parameters. The overlap is outstanding. Okay, once we start thinking of Gaussian curves, we start thinking how probability density functions are described. In probability methodology, PDFs are described in terms of integral moments, central moments, and moments about zero. 
first four moments are used to develop the mean value, the variance, the skewness, and the excess. Applying this methodology to boundary layers, we have these second derivative based central moments, where this is the normalized Gaussian like kernel. Notice that the mean location is the first moment about zero, which in this case can be shown to be inversely proportional to the wall shear stress. For laminar flow, the second derivative moments work well. However, for turbulent flow, it is known that the viscous forces, which are proportional to the second derivative u sub xy, are only present near the wall and are absent in the outer region of the boundary layer. Hence we need another boundary layer kernel which works in the outer region of the turbulent boundary layer. I looked at other integral kernels and an obvious choice is the first derivative kernel. Notice that for this kernel the mean location is the displacement thickness. So let's use this new first derivative base description to explore the boundary layer shape using some Rolls-Royce Urquiflack test data. Traditionally for shape we deal with H sub 1 2. Here's a plot of some Rolls-Royce data available on the internet. It is traditionally assumed that H sub 1 2 values greater than 2.6 are laminar, values between 2.6 and 1.4 are transitional and values less than 1.4 the profiles are turbulent. Now consider these eight profiles from the T3AM data set. The H sub 1 2 values of these eight profiles indicate they are all laminar. However if we plot the scale profiles using the Blasius stretching variables, we can see there is a systematic change in the profile shape with the Reynolds number. In fact, the values appear to be skewed, changing close to the wall, but are similar in the outer region. If we plot the first derivative base skewness parameter versus the Reynolds number, we can see that the profiles are indeed becoming skewed relative to the laminar flow profile curve. The laminar flow line shown here is the theoretical value calculated using the Blasius laminar flow solution. We can see that some of the first eight profiles in fact show non-laminar flow behavior. Hence the new shape parameters are capturing velocity profile info that has no traditional equivalent. Now consider another obvious boundary layer kernel based on the velocity profile itself, or in this case the defect profile. The mean value and the central moments for the defect profile based kernel are shown here. For the turbulent boundary layer, the new boundary layer description allows us to look at the ratio between the inner viscous region thickness and the overall velocity profile thickness by using the second derivative kernel for delta sub v and the outer boundary layer thickness defined to mimic the 99% thickness given by delta sub m, where we are using 3 sigma here. We should note that in the PDF world, it is more traditional to use 4 sigma. So here's a plot using the two ratios for some turbulent boundary layer data sets covering a large Reynolds number range. We can see that the comparison between the new and the 99% is quite good. We also see that the thickness ratio increases as the Reynolds number increases. Although not unexpected, it is nice to finally have the tools available to actually verify this phenomenon. So you might wonder what is the cost in terms of the computational effort? We have all these different central moments to calculate so you might think that it takes a considerable amount of effort. However, if we define an auxiliary set of integrals given by alpha sub n, 
it turns out that all but one of the first four second derivative moments, all of the first four first derivative moments, and all of the first four velocity profile moments can be calculated using just the first four alpha moments. Thus only four displacement thickness like integrals need to be calculated. I found that the numerical integration procedure for the higher order moments is subject to error in the presence of experimental noise. So please refer to the paper for the suggested numerical calculation details. Okay, so let's summarize the results. We have the traditional parameters for describing the boundary layer, and now we have a whole host of new parameters. In the traditional boundary layer description method, the delta sub 99 parameter sounds good in theory, but is actually problematic in practice because neither the laminar nor the turbulent boundary layers have known functional forms for the tail region, delta sub 99 cannot be fitted. You must interpolate the data, which typically involves a few data points. This last 1% point must be picked out of the noise on the data. From a theoretical standpoint, delta sub 99 will never fall out of some theoretical calculation. All right, then on the other hand, we have our new parameters. These parameters are based on standard mathematical method used to describe prob probability density functions. The characterizing integrals use all of the data points. You now have mean values and sigma thicknesses. You have shape parameters which actually describe the shape of the velocity profile in terms of the skewness and the excess. I would like to note that a new paper is in the works to extend the integral moment method to the thermal boundary layer. So that's it. Thanks for your time. Please email any suggestions or comments to this address here. Thanks again. Bye.